I'm trying to build a marble machine. I tried twice, I failed twice, and now third time's a charm. This sketch from Andrew Carpenter sums up my vision perfectly. And last week, I presented to you these programming profiles that you can take on and off and that solves a lot of issues with the music resolution. But these profiles need something to sit on. Let me present to you a new music programming wheel and voila, here it is. To understand why this design looks like it does and to appreciate its magnificence, let's take a look at the previous designs of my two earlier marble machines. On the original marble machine, I hand built a pretty concentric wheel and then I used Lego Technique parts to make the programming grid. And this was a really, really bad idea because the space between each programming node was not perfect because it was handmade. For the second machine, I used my CNC machine for almost everything, so that was a little bit better. But I machined everything flat, and then I had to manually bend these programming plates, and I made them into four quarters. And then once I had these four quarter plates, I had a lot of issue in getting the equal distance between the plates perfect. So also on Marble Machine X, the spacing between the notes were not equal and the timing of the music suffered. So let's learn from these previous designs. The major issues were unequal spacing between programming holes and the outer diameter was not concentric. Uh, the minor issues was switching between songs was hard, high number of programming holes to machine and way too many manual processes. If we turn them around, we can turn them into design requirements for our new design. So the must-haves are equal spacing between programming holes so the music is tight and we need the outer diameter and the inner diameter to be perfectly concentric. These programming plates require perfectly inner diameter because of the click function. Because the click here, the feet are grabbing onto the underside of this curve. Then we have the nice to haves. So we would like a simpler way to switch songs if possible, a lower number of programming holes to machine if possible, and no manual processes if possible. Concentricity is an important concept for this video. So what is it? Well, these two circles are not concentric. They are not on the same place. When these two circles are concentric, they are precisely at the same place. And for machines that use rotation, concentricity is a big deal. With that, let's look a little bit about my design process, how I got to this design. So we started here and we had these beaters and I had a lower drum, not anymore. I skipped the lowest programming drum. The marble machine is only playing music with marbles, no drum beater on the drums. This design also used power transmission belts, but that made it really difficult to switch out the programming drum between songs. So I'm gonna skip the belts and just do gears instead. This was my first version and I used plywood for the spokes for this version. And let's talk about the dimensional stability of materials. Plywood is much more dimensionally stable than what the average Wintergatan viewer thinks. However, <laughs> steel and plastics are more dimensionally stable than plywood. This means that if the humidity or the temperature changes, the surrounding changes, the material stays the same size. It won't swell or expand in different directions, making things unprecise. So, goodbye plywood, <laughs> goodbye. I'll miss you not. <laughs> Let's just wave goodbye to plywood, everyone. Uh, we're going for more dimensional stable stuff on Marble Machine 3. So let's try steel. And I started out with this design. I had this adapter plate between the bearing housing and the spokes, but then I realized, so instead of this blue plate right here, I could actually just skip that and put the metal spokes directly on the bearing housing, saving a part. So I'm already trying to save parts here. So then we had this quarter section of steel rims and then I had a clever system with eight sections of plastic parts and this provided this surface here that I can screw things into. I thought this was a really clever design of how to build a big shape from small thin parts very material efficient and stuff like that. But also, I had a strange feeling that it's a little apart. I went to bed and I woke up the morning after and I was like, hmm, let's try plastic instead. So I realized that by just making the whole side 
out of 10 millimeter engineering plastic on the CNC machine, we could skip all those metal parts. And that's the spoke on my final design. The MMX wheel use 142 parts. The MM3 wheel with the steel spokes, 76 parts. And our new MM3 plastic wheel. I should say engineering plastic, otherwise you will hate the wheel just because you hate the word plastic. MM3 engineering plastic wheel uses only 38 parts. So four times fewer parts than from the Marmachine X. That's a good improvement. If we look at materials and processes, our new wheel is only using one material and one process. It's awesome. And this is my favorite slide for today. Programming holes. On the Marble Machine X wheel, we had 19,000 programming holes. On the new wheel, we have 1,900. That's a 10x, one order of magnitude improvement. That's the kind of improvement I'm going for with the Marble Machine 3. So we can already check some nice to haves. We have a lower number of programming holes, 10x lower. We have no manual processes. And do we have a simpler way to switch songs? Yes, let me show you. So we have this example. Instead of having one drum, I'm just making two. So when I'm playing music, on the left one on the stage, the right one is being reprogrammed, and then we just switch them out. So by using the gears, it allows for fast switching instead of belts. So we can also check the simpler way to switch songs. So we have all the nice to haves, now we have to address the must haves. To achieve our most important design requirements, I have designed this wheel for manufacturing. We start with a CNC machine, we had 10 millimeter plastic sheet, and we cut the gear and some brackets. And you might think that this is perfectly circular and concentric, it's not. On a planar CNC machine, even the slightest error in X and Y axis will make your circle wobbly like this. So here you can see the blue line is not cut to the final dimension because I'm not trusting the CNC machine while it's machining flat. We are going to recut this blue edge soon. Now we have these parts and we can put the brackets to the side for the moment and we have a bearing housing from SQF and we take that and we put it onto our wheel and we add some nice chunky M10 bolts et voila, we have a nice thing. And now we take our brackets and we add them across the perimeter to our thing and we have a nice little package. These holes that are marked blue are not machined yet. I just forgot to remove them in CAD for this presentation. Then we take the wheel like this and we put it on our brand new rotary axle. And this is super cool. Avid CNC have sent me the rotary expansion kit for my CNC machine. So thank you Avid CNC for that. Alex CNC have designed the implementation. So there's a stepper motor and then we bought extra an harmonic drive, which is a gearbox with one to 40 gear ratio. So we're actually gearing down the stepper motor 40 times to make it really precise and strong. So then we indicate the axle to perfect concentricity on the harmonic drive. We need a clutch, it's not in the image. Then we put the wheel to the perfect axle. That's the machining setup. But if we would machine on top of this, that would be too wobbly. So we're strengthening it with some MDF. And then we can go on and machine this on the rotor CNC machine. Isn't this super cool? So here's the operation we will do. You can see the blue edge here goes from round down to this pattern. So we have machined these blue areas and we are also drilling all these holes. So there are 64 faces around the perimeter. And after doing this, these 64 faces are perfectly concentric, so to speak, to the middle of this wheel. It should run extremely true. Next part, more 10 millimeter plastic stock, and then we're cutting these test parts. And they are cut in different lengths. And this is just a demonstration because we're gonna wrap this around the wheel and I'm going to cut test pieces to see exactly what distance between these ribs makes them fit perfectly along with the screw holes. Next, we need something to cut the gear from. And this is with 20 millimeter stock material. And I'm making these half moons. And they're pretty cool because when you just inverse them, they create this 3D shape, which becomes a full wheel like this. We put it together with 64 M4 bolts. And then in these blue holes, we put 64 flathead screws. And you could argue that 128 screws is too much for this. We can have that discussion later. I think it should be 128, actually. I, I can defend this. 
you have to like curb your enthusiasm about chasing part count. To buy 64 bolts or to buy 128 bolts is just an economical thing. Okay, to attach 128 bolts takes twice amount of time, but what we're really trying to chase down is manual custom parts. Hardware parts of the shelves, we can be a little bit more splurgy splurgy with those as I have been in this design. I'm already trying to defend myself here. Anyway, <laughs> we make a Star Wars attack ship and then we add some brackets and that's it. We're ready for the assembly. So now we're wrapping our um, plastic programming plates around here and we're attaching them with 128 more bolts, actually only 64 this time. So here you can see the bolts close up and then the bolts for the brackets and you can see the brackets coming through right there. And that's actually the whole wheel. If you look carefully, you see there's no bolts on the left side. It's because I'm using the bolts from the gear stock double up. So now we can attach the gear stock to the wheel. And as you can see, the flat heads are going down and through and into the side. We're heading back to the rotor lathe and we're mounting this whole beast onto the lathe. We're going to design the lathe so we can lower and higher the rotary axis, which means that my CNC machine that has like 30, 40 centimeter C height can work on any thickness material. And it's designed actually for the purpose of making this wheel. And then we're gonna make one of the most beautiful features I have ever dreamed of, the double helical gear. Some people call this gear type a herringbone gear, but when there's a slot in the middle like I have, it's actually not a herringbone, but a double helical gear, which I think is super cool. If we manage to trim this rotary axis to perfection, this helical gear will be butter smooth perfection, concentric and perfect. It's machined around the axle that it will actually sit on on the machine itself in the end. Last but not least, we're machining the programming holes on the rotary in place, which should end up with very, very, very perfect programming holes. And that's it. We have machined and manufactured our brand new programming wheel. I hope you love it as much as I do. There it is, a beast of simplicity and complexity. Some concerns, can we make the rotary CNC machine precise enough? Probably yes, but I won't make any assumptions. We have to try and see. Is the plastic rigid enough? Probably, because this curve shape makes like a torsion box. If you're looking closely, it's not a complete gap between the panels. There are some taps between all the panels. It's actually a grid that ties together really tightly like a torsion box. This whole project is a collab with Avid CNC, who sent me the rotary kit and the machine, Alex CNC, who's made the design of the first steps of the implementation, and Lucas and Siegfried's mechanical music cabinet, which is where the machine is, and Lucas will help me finalize this build. So thank you so much, everyone involved in the project. And I'm so happy because the Marble Machine 3 LEGO kit is forming. We have the programming profiles and now we have the programming wheel. So it is actually time to make a roadmap update. Favorite time of the day. Here's the Marble Machine roadmap and let's expand number two. So last week we made this programming pin. Issue 2.2 programming wheel designed for manufacturing, concentricity, I'll mark that as check and I'll keep on checking this tick box in every video from now on. Thank you for watching and good luck with everything you're doing. Ciao.